It's Friday, July 24th, 2015, and let's talk about what happened this week over at XDADevelopers.com. First up, yet another of the first generation Android Wear devices has received a price cut. The original Asus Zen Watch is now available for $129.99 with free shipping over on the Play Store. The LG G4 Stylus was launched in India for just under 25,000 rupees, or just under 400 US dollars. With the Snapdragon 600, 1 gig of RAM, and 16 gigs of storage, I'm not really sure that that's a great price for it. It actually sounds a bit high to me. Ubic, a brand new company, has put out a Kickstarter project for what they're calling a flagship level phone, the Uno, which is currently available for $299, and it'll shoot up to $345 when the campaign is over. It's got the OctaCore MediaTek 6795 processor, 3 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, a micro SD card slot, a 3100 milliamp hour battery, and a 21 megapixel rear facing camera, so it does sound like a pretty interesting device at that price point. Links to their Kickstarter project can be found in the portal post down in the video description. A couple of stories popped up about the ZTE Axon device as well. According to Corning, the Axon is going to be the first phone in the entire world to use their brand new antimicrobial Gorilla Glass, so hopefully your phone will be a little bit more sanitary to use. The Exxon also showed up on the TENAA site, China's equivalent of the FCC, sporting a rear-mounted fingerprint sensor. I would assume that this means there will be at least two different variants of the Exxon, since the one that we've seen in the US didn't have that sensor on it. Yu has announced yet another new device, the Eureka Plus, that is almost exactly identical to the original Eureka, but now it comes with a 1080p display and has the Sony IMX214 sensor instead of the IMX135, but it is still a 13 megapixel sensor. Of course, when you keep everything the same, but increase the screen resolution and the camera quality, you do have to assume that battery life and performance are going to suffer at least a little bit. Either way, they're gonna be doing it through flash sales over on Amazon India again, so if you're interested in it at just under 10,000 rupees, keep an eye on their site. There were also a few interesting leaks this week, a potential image of the 2015 Moto X popped up online, and then someone on Reddit found some references to a 2015 Moto G on the Moto Maker site, claiming that it's going to come in two different varieties, one with 8 gigs of storage and 1 gig of RAM, and one with 16 gigs of storage and 2 gigs of RAM, which does sound like a pretty decent option, as long as they keep the price point low. Pictures of the Huawei watch leaked out over on an Italian blog as well, and it does look quite snazzy. And with the OnePlus 2 getting certified by TENAA in China as well, some images of it have shown up online, so you may want to go take a look at those. Over on Sony's blog, they've confirmed that they're rolling out Android 5.1 to the Xperia Z3 and Z2 series starting right now, with the Z1 series coming up next, so do be on the lookout for those updates as usual. XDA senior member Aman Aurora put together a thread on the forum showing you how you can install the latest Android M preview, and how to root it, and how to enable multi-window. His thread is specifically targeting the Nexus 5, but a lot of what he says in there should work for any of the Nexus devices with M preview images available, so if you aren't sure how to update to the latest preview, it might be worth reading it. Three XDA recognized developers have managed to put out an unofficial build of CM12.1 for the HTC One M9. According to the thread, the camera, USB on the go, and FM radio are not working, so if you do rely on any of those, you might not want to jump on board just yet, but otherwise go check out their thread for more details. Three XDA forum members have managed to get the Alcatel one Touch Idle 3 rooted, and they've put together a pretty easy to follow guide for doing so. From what I read, they built upon an existing exploit, but still, it's nice to see this device get rooted. And it seems like they've got an unofficial build of Twerp for it as well, so do look forward to lots more development coming for that device. An XDA senior member, as well as an XDA recognized developer, worked together to create an exposed module that will allow you to use HTC Sense apps on any ROM or device as long as it's running Android 5.0 or higher, and obviously the exposed framework. So if you've moved away from your HTC devices, but you missed some of their Sense UI stuff, now you can sort of have your cake and eat it too. And there was an interesting article about an XDA member's workaround for the Snapdragon 810's overheating issues and throttling issues by way of putting aluminum foil between his phone's case and his phone. It almost sounds too good to be true, but the results seem to show an improvement of about 5%, maybe a bit more, and a couple of degrees Celsius lower, so you can't argue with the results, I suppose. And another member tried it with copper foil instead of aluminum foil, and of course, better conductor, it got better performance as a result. And anyway, as usual, three other videos were posted to XDA TV this week. TK did an Exposed Tuesday talking about action widgets, and then he did a showdown between Hound and Google Now, and then he did an app review of Bold Beast. 
But you know what? That's going to be about all from me for today. You can find the links to all of the stories that I talked about down in the video description as usual, as well as the links to my YouTube channels. Remember, if you like this video, please do leave us a like down below the video and subscribe to receive all of our videos as soon as they become available. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.